Today I'm here with Bunti in my new Tesla Model 3. We've both been Tesla investors for a few years. Yep. The stock has gone through a lot of ups and downs. And today we're just going to get Bunti's impressions of the new Model 3 and when we see the world will start recognizing Tesla as an AI company and not just a car company. So we're going to drive along this episode as we just give you a short tour of the new Model 3 from the inside and talk about our impressions of Tesla investors. Yep. Click subscribe to stay updated to more videos on Tesla. Bunti, welcome back to the channel. Thank you. So how does it feel being inside the Model 3? Exciting. You New were car. in Elvin's Model 3 last time together. Yes, we made yes. a video. Yep. What's the biggest difference you notice? The design uh, is very different. Uh, looks different compared to what I saw on the photos. Definitely a lot nicer, uh, this new Model 3. Okay, so we are now at 62% state of charge. We're going to set navigation. So for Tesla owners, like we want to charge, we can click on charging. We can go to a slow charger. And one of my favorite slow chargers is over here in One Holland Village. So if we click on this, let's just take a 20 minute drive to One Holland Village and talk about our journey together. Yep. So the first thing you'll notice is that there are no stocks anymore. So Elon Musk always believes that the best part is no part. And they have this vision that in the future, the cars will start driving itself. Mm. So the turn signals are now here. It's like two mouse button, left turn, right turn. As a Tesla investor, how does that make you feel, Bunti? About the design? Yeah, yeah and this is removing all these things. I, I don't I think this one are uh, mostly just design choices and definitely Tesla has a way like they have a philosophy on how to design the car. Mm. I would say that um, it's a cool or how to say it's a it's a way for them to attract a group of consumers or buyers that are interested in getting a car that is minimalistic in style. So I think this is definitely a plus for them. Because for buyers who is used to this kind of minimalistic design, they are not going to switch out to those old old type of cars with tons of buttons and knobs here and there, right? Mm. So definitely, it's a, it's a way to build brand, I think. Yeah, good it's choice. Really changing the way people are driving. So like one pedal driving. So like right now, if I just put my foot on an accelerator and release it, the car comes to a complete stop. Yeah. And more and more EVs are starting to adopt that. Whole star. Mm. They have single pedal driving like Tesla as well. So. Tesla is not just changing the shift to EVs, but they're also changing how cars are being used. There's so much changes that Tesla is bringing, but then it doesn't seem to be recognized by investors. So what I mean by that is in the past three years, Tesla's stock price has been flat. Mm. What's your take on that, Wendy? I think when it comes to share price, there are many things that are um, affecting the price, right? It's not like... Um, as Tesla launched a better product, then share price confirmed to go up, right? There are so many external factors. And just that recently, uh, we are facing uh, challenges in terms of like uh, all these car prices uh, dropping. Yeah. And they have to do that because now um, competitions, there, there, there's definitely a lot more competitions. At the same time, it seems that the demand is not as high as what we expected in the past. Mm. So supply demand, they just have to cut the price to sell every car they make. Mm. I think this is all uh, good decisions making on the Tesla side. Mm. On the other hand, they, they also don't have much choice. But it's just that we need to look at it from a perspective of will this last long? Is mm. it like permanently they are going to drop the price to very low price? Mm. I, I don't think so. I think all this, there's some cyclicality to it. And as the as the, uh, car prices stabilize, I think their financial will look better. Mm. And that's when uh, the share price will recover. So. But if you ask me when it will happen, it's, it's hard to tell, right? Mm. And part of it is, again, a lot of investors see Tesla as a car company. And the car industry, we know is not so profitable. Mm. Recently, there was also a report showing how the Chinese government actually gave BYD a lot of subsidies. Mm -hmm. So being associated with the car industry is almost like a negative multiplier for Tesla's valuation. Do you mm. see that? I think nothing wrong being a car company. Uh, um, you can sell anything as long as the price that you sell at versus the cost to produce that, yeah. you, like you can make a profit out of it. You can still make a lot of profits. It's just that being associated with a car company means that people would think this company is a heavy um, capex industry. Mm. Like they have to spend a lot of money making, like building gigafactories and so on, which is true, especially in the initial years. Yeah. 
but looking at how Tesla manufacturing their cars, they are using all sorts of like new technology, mm. giga casting, all these things, right? Mm. All these actually have a cost advantage. Mm. So I, I don't think that just because they're a car company means that they won't have good returns. Mm. So I think this is the part that many people um, misunderstood. Other car companies not making money doesn't mean that Tesla can't make money, right? Yeah. They are the exception to the rule. Yeah. And that's hard for many investors to understand because yep. they see most car companies don't seem to be doing too well. Yep. Like BYD's uh, sales were down 42% Q1. Mm. I think many other car company sales were down double digit as well. Yep. So you can see over here as we make a turn in the section, the blind spot camera is working. So a lot of people may see a car, I see right now a robot on the wheels. Mm. Very few cars give you a full view of like what the car see. And I noticed that this is a lot better compared to the, the older version. Yeah, like the is, uh, resolution, the, the details that you can see, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of details. Uh. Yes, and these are the new upgraded hardware 4.0 cameras with 5 oh. megapixels. They've got wider viewing angle. You see our friend there, that's the old Model 3 in front. So we start seeing more and more Teslas on the road. In Singapore, there's more than 3,000 Teslas now. Mm. So I think the progress is, is there. It's coming. Three thousand Tesla cars, despite yeah. the COE. Yes, <laughs> despite COE. And again, this is the most expensive country in the world to own a car. Now, a lot of people argue that this is tough. So I. What that signals to me as a Tesla investor is if Tesla can sell cars in Singapore at 160,000 US dollars, they can definitely sell a Model 3 anywhere else in the world for 35,000 US dollars. Definitely. And in the US, after the tax subsidies for EVs, it's even less. How's the experience so far? Riding in front? Good. Good. Mm. What do you like the most about this car? I think in terms of comfort, yes, a, a lot comfortable com compared to the older one. Just the sound isolations, mm. I think it's a lot better. The mm. design, I like, I really mm. like the design. Mm. Other than that, it's a Tesla car. That's see, enough, right? It just sees the whole world, <laughs> so, right? So yes. eight cameras around, you can see the traffic lights. Yeah. Now, what we don't have here in Singapore is full self-driving supervised, like US and Canada. Mm -hmm. And so that, that vision of like, Tesla becoming an AI company seems further away in this part of the world, like halfway around the world. Mm. When, what, what do you think it takes for most investors to start seeing Tesla as an AI company? I'll say this one really is not about the company. It's about the people who look at the companies. Okay. Some people who will pay attention to all these details, the mm. stuff that the company does behind the scene, right? Mm. Even uh, simple things, a uh, 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 UI like this. Autopilot. Yes. So if you don't look at what is behind the scene, right? Mm. And you don't pay attention and you just think that, okay, it's just another car company, then mm. I don't think that's wrong. Mm. You can continue to think so. Mm. But there will be other people who will be more curious about what they are doing with their FSD, with their autonomous driving, the, the approach that they are taking, which is very different compared to other, other uh, autonomous driving companies. Mm. Um, then you will realize uh, Tesla is always the one that takes somewhat different approach. Mm. Whether they will be successful or they will be the first one to roll out, I, I don't know. But I, I do trust uh, the judgment from Elon Musk. Yeah. After experiencing the Tesla products, first in Alvin's Model 3, now this one, yeah. how has this changed your conviction as an investor? Not much has changed, yeah, I would say. Uh, I, I guess also because I followed the companies for some time already. Mm. I, I kind of know like, their tra trajectory, I know what they are doing, um, their approach. So to me, it's like just really observe the details. For mm. example, like are they still putting on all this refinement mm. even when their cast is good, they try to even make it better. Mm. So I, th I think this one will give me more appreciations on their efforts. Mm. But other than that, in terms of the investment, my view rarely changed uh, because uh, I, don't obs I, I don't pay attention to th those that are new, like, like what are the new features. Mm. But just looking at things that's more subtle. Yeah. It's hard to be a Tesla investor now. Sentiments are very low. Do you see that as an opportunity or you see that as a red flag? Actually, first thing I want to ask is that 
uh, is it really hard? Because for for me, I don't feel it very hard. Mm. For for me, it's just like uh, if investing a, in a company, you don't the share price doesn't go up in a straight line. Mm. That's the first thing, right? Mm. Second thing is that as the share price fluctuate, mm. um, to me, um, I need to learn to be comfortable with with any things that happen, right? Mm. Sometimes it's the share price that is fluctuating. Sometimes it's really the fundamentals because of the environment yeah. get, getting harder, harsher. Uh, that will happen to any companies. Uh, the difference of be- between like myself versus like traders, right? I'll was, I was see that I'm someone who, who are like comfortable to take on, just right on the up and downs. Mm. So I enjoy that, that part. Mm. So I, I don't think that's hard for me, mm. but yeah, I, I would just say that. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you're quite zen about it. That's been consistent. Uh. We've been making videos yes. the past two years. You've always told us that the short-term movements don't face you as much, both movements up and down. Yep. For a lot of people, it's how to build that, especially for newer retail investors. Mm. It's hard. Yeah. I say maybe it's even harder for those who have like super concentrated positions. Mm. Then that's where the emotional kicks, kicks in, right? Yeah. So I would say, I wouldn't say like you should do this or shouldn't do that, right? It's more like you need to understand yourself, mm. and if having such a concentrated portfolio mm. make you emotional, and and that's the part that you don't like about it, maybe you can just restructure the portfolio so that it doesn't affect you that much. Mm. Because all this investing portfolio, definitely these are very important, especially when it comes to talking about retirement, mm. planning for retirement, and so on, right? But I think we still need to live our life, right? Yeah. Yes. So this should be like a small part of our life. So one to watch out is people try to find shortcuts or they're just trying to find, okay, someone successful, let me copy that. Mm. So example, like Tesla stock 7x in 2020. Mm. So many people thought, okay, like, this is a great way to make money. Mm. And then they don't see the returns the past three years. Mm. Right now they say, oh, Nvidia stock has went up so much. Maybe I should just buy more Nvidia and see how it goes. Mm. So part of it is, People just trying to emulate success by seeing what other people have found success in and trying to do the same. How, so how do you advise people to really build their own thesis versus copy a thesis? Like what's your own process? Like if Adam Koo says, okay, you should buy more Meta stock, yeah. how do you process it? Uh, also, first thing is that yes, copy is good. Uh, but depends on what you are copying. Mm. We don't copy actions, right? Because um, yeah, all these actions can move very fast and then it need to suit the environment and yeah. so on. So so you, you don't copy the actions, but what you want to copy is copy the mindset, mm. a great mindset, right? I think that's, that's a, a lot more a lot more important. And I think that's why we need to understand like when someone take an actions, right? And you, you think of copying it, yeah. uh, copying the actions, right? You need to think behind the scene, like can you understand what's the person thinking about? Mm. What's the rationale? What's the principles? Mm. I think those things will be a lot more helpful, not just for the moment, mm. but also it's helpful for you in, in the future because you will rely on those principles in your own decision making. Mm. That's the part that's harder to copy, but that's the part that will be a lot more useful uh, in, in the future. Copy the mindsets. Talking about mindsets, I want to yep. pivot back to EVs. Like mm. we see a lot more Teslas, a lot more BYDs now. Mm. Have you seen any noticeable shift in mindset towards EVs among your friends and family in the past twelve months? Yeah, I need to think about it. Who, mm. Like, are they more receptive to buying EVs? Is it more mainstream? You see a model Y in front of us over there. So. <laughs> White color, some yeah, siblings. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Actually, I'm, well, among my a uh, group of friends, maybe other than you and Kelvin Liu, yeah. I, I, I I don't recall anyone just bought new cars recently. Mm. So, especially in, in Singapore. Mm. Who else? Yeah, we got a friend. Martin. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I didn't know. <laughs> well, congrats, Martin. He's buying which car? Also, same one. And this one? Also, oh, yeah. okay, okay. Also, white color. Oh. So, okay, back to your questions. Eh? Yeah, it's uh, EV adoptions. Do you think we've reached escape velocity already? Like there's no turning back from EVs? Definitely. This one, I, 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 wouldn't, I, I wouldn't comment based on like my observation among my friends uh, because mm. like, in Singapore, those who drive cars are still in minority, especially yeah. among, among my uh, friends. I would just say uh, based on just like 
logical deductions, right? Mm. More charging network. Like I think Darren, you you have observed how how much like all these supercharger that they are building up, right? Yeah, it's a lot more convenient nowadays, right? It's correct. The yeah. one we're going to so, in One Holland Village just opened two months ago. Yeah, it's got four of the slow chargers, which yeah. are free for Tesla owners now. By wow. the way. So just that one alone, I would say it's a big plus. Uh. Mm. Yeah, people definitely have like, you know, uh, range anxiety, right? Mm. Like let's say two years ago. Mm. But now I think this is getting a lot better. Maybe less so in Singapore compared to US mm. and other countries. But here we are also picking up. So I think that's, that's the main part. Mm. Yeah, once you solve that, um, and just because the driving experience, uh, driving experience is a lot better, right? So mm. I, I think there's no turning back. Uh. The driving experience is great. Yeah. With EVs, the acceleration is fast, so got a red light. We, it's easier to accelerate when it comes to lane change, takeovers as well. Do you feel it's quieter? Yeah, yeah. There's no engine noise, it's just the uh, road noise. Though. Yeah, that's right. Anything you don't like about the Tesla, Bertie? I like everything about the car. I just don't like about the COE in Singapore. <laughs> oh, that one's out of Tesla's control. <laughs> Still, well, we're trending downwards. Last year, the Cat B COE peaked at 144,000. Yeah. Right now, we've seen in recent months as low as I think 85, 88,000. Mm. We got this one for 97,000 Cat B COE. Not the highest, not the lowest. Of course, the best time to buy a car was during COVID days when mm. COE or Cat 40. B was as low as 30 plus thousand. 30 plus, yeah. However, it's also, I think everything happens for a reason. It's a gift that we got the new refreshed Model 3. Mm. A very common question a lot of people ask, I thought you've been, you want to buy a Model, Model y, y for a yes. long time yeah. because of the space. Yeah. However, I find that the upgrades on the Model 3, like the ventilated seats, mm. the extra range, the build quality, the quiet cabin, the more responsive screen, the, all of these just add up to the experience to make it too compelling compared to a Model, Model Y. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay to make do. And in the future, if I want the refreshed Model Y, which I estimate may come out in China by end of this year, in Southeast Asia by early next year, oh. it makes more sense to me mm. to trade in the new Model 3 for the new Model Y compared to buying the current Model Y and trading in for the old Model Y. Because potentially, the resale value for the current Model Y may go down when the new Model Y comes up, which mm -hmm. is what we are seeing happening with the Model 3s right now. So I do see some owners trying to trade in the old Model 3s for the new Model 3. Mm -hmm. How much is the road tax, Darren? The road tax for the rear-wheel drive is 2.2k Sing dollars. That's more than a nice car, but, but not significantly more now. Actually, let's go up here. And if you look at the long range version, the road tax is about, I think, 5.4k. The performance is about 5.6k. We all have seen the post on the new Model 3 Ludicrous coming out soon. Because it's more powerful, some people estimate that the road tax here in Singapore will be about 6 to 7k a year. Yeah. So that's like 5k more on road tax per year. So over a 10 year period, extra 50k. So if you think from it from a sedan standpoint, not worthwhile. But if you think from it as a performance car or sports car standpoint. It means if you already someone is going to buy a Maserati or Bugatti, yep. then that car is super value for money. So I think it depends on our use case. Actually, what is different for that performance? Is it like different type of engine? Do they like it's, as, as in? It's just again tuned for like racing, higher performance. So I think oh. the zero to hundred could be as low as maybe two point six seconds. Mm. This one zero to hundred is six point one seconds which as we felt in some of the acceleration is really more yeah. than enough, right? Yes. So I think the car, i say it's a lot more fun for Malaysia, for Thailand, for US, for Singapore. You may bring it to a track, but how often? Yeah. yeah? Maybe two weekends every, every month. Mm. Again, it's the target audience of people who buy all those performance cars, mm. not for daily driving to us. What's the price difference? I think the price difference, the Model 3 ludicrous. Uh -huh. If we just benchmark with the old Model 3 performance mm. and the current COE prices, maybe around 260, 270 casing. Mm. Yes, the camera person had a question. I can't remember my question. <laughs> um, the 
Is it dual motor for performance motor? A performance model, sorry. For performance is dual motor as well. Hmm. Only plat is tri motor. What about the insurance premium, Darren? How much do you pay? Because I'm a new driver, so I'm paying a higher insurance premium because I don't have the full 50% no claims discount and CD yet. So I'm paying right now about 3000 plus for my car insurance. It will only go down over time, so that's a good thing. Mm. Right now in Singapore, the car insurance for EVs is still higher than ICE cars because for the insurers, the mindset is if you need to do repairs on EV, it will cost more than an ICE car. But is that true? It's true. Oh. However, EVs are generally safer and less likely to get into serious accidents or serious damage. Or like example, I see things like battery, like car fires, right? People always see headlines of car fires in EVs and it's already melted in their mind. But there are actually 5 to 10x more car fires on an ICE car than on an EV. Mm. And ICE is literally internal combustion engine. So there's combustion happening inside the car already. So I think part of it is in, as insurers get more data, they see real world claims data, the insurance costs for EVs will hopefully start trending downwards. So here we are at One Holland Village. Have you been here before, Bunti? Uh, it's a new mall. Oh, then no. <laughs> I, think it, I think it opened just maybe beginning of this year. So pass by every day. There are a MRT. lot of charges in this mall as well. Mm -hmm. There are SP charges and there are also Tesla charges. So I'm going to just drive past the SP charges as we go to the Tesla charges. So here in One Holland V, Basement 1 car park has SP charges. If I'm correct, about 8 of them. So I use SP charges a lot on top of the Tesla charges. Then at Basement 2, there are 4 that Tesla wall connectors, destination charges. It is a pet friendly building. Very pet oh, friendly mall. Super a lot of dogs, uh, the dog fairs. Some people bring their cats here as well. My daughter loves Din Tai Fung, so this is a very popular place because they have a Din Tai Fung here also. It's a, so it's a reminder, it's Saturday morning, it's 10.44 a.m. And this is a very popular family mall. So we'll see whether we can, can actually find available charges. Which is again, it's a good peek into the EV owner's experience because for a lot of people, considering their first EV, they're very worried about charging. Yeah. And as you all notice, I'm still using the old ERP. So some of my friends, <laughs> who are getting their Tesla, they were asking, am I going to be stuck with a new ERP? For all cars delivered after 1st May, then yes, your car will come with the new ERP, which has more things here, more things there. Okay. So first, I'll drive through basement 1, just to show you the SP chargers on the, the right side. So the new ERP, what's the downside? It's just where it takes up a lot more space. So you can see, oh. these are all the SP chargers. Not all are open yet. They got slow and fast chargers. Wow, EV, Kia, Hyundai. Yeah, you see a lot more EVs, right? Yes. All brands. Actually, BMW's EV sales have went up by, I think, 20% year on year. Mm. So BMW is quite committed to EVs. You see a dog over there in front. <laughs> a lot of pet owners here. There, these are the new SP chargers. Not yet open. Oh, no, yeah, open. We still wrap, but you can see right, there's so many bays. So there are at least eight SP chargers up here in basement one. And that's before going down to see the Tesla chargers. And again, as a reminder, the Tesla wall connectors, the superchargers for now. They are only for Tesla owners in Singapore. So around the world, Tesla is opening them up to more, to all cars. And so actually, Bunti, you know, as an investor, Tesla is opening up their charging network. Mm. They are, so they are monetizing on charging. They will eventually license out FSD. Yep. So as you saw on Autopilot earlier, like this software stream of revenue and recurring subscription can also add to Tesla's profitability. Yep. What's your take on that? Yeah, I would say investors like this kind of revenue. 
because it's like recurring. Uh-huh. You don't have to do a lot of innovative stuff to increase the revenue because yeah. you just keep on increasing. People yeah. keep on paying. So as you see, some companies they transitions from from non subscription based to subscription based, right? Like Their valuations will go up a lot. So, yes. So I would say maybe when investor realize that uh, Tesla is not a car company but a charging station company that will be a catalyst, maybe. <laughs> mm. You see all the Teslas on the left? Those are Ooh. the chargers. There's oh, one more white. slot for us. Wunti, just uh, nice. I'll let you charge for the car for us. Oh, nice. Yeah, as we <laughs> wrap up this video. All right. Okay, so here we are. Very fortunate. We've got the last available charging slot. Reserve for you. Reserve. What <laughs> <laughs> big, big. <laughs> there we are, right in the middle. SJS204. So again, in the new Tesla, because there's no stocks, how to reverse? Swipe down. Then you can see your rear camera. Then you just bring your bum in. Oh, it's a light sucks up. That's it. That's all the way down. And these are the, with the new hardware 4 cameras, you can see it's very high fidelity, the this range, the distance. Using radar, right? No radar at no all, radar. so just 8 just cameras from oh. all around the car. So now we're going to head out, and we're just going to charge the car. So let me just hold on the camera. Wuti, are you ready to do our first I don't know how to do, charging? you have to teach me. Okay, <laughs> let's head out together first. Here come. Take out this one? Yes, so you... Pull this out, and then first time there. You come up here, you press the circle button on the charger. Yes. Mm. Then you plug it into the AC charge port above. Then all we wait for is blue, it's connecting to the car. And it turns green, it's charging. Wow. That All right, so easy. Your first time <laughs> charging a Tesla. <laughs> Muti, thank you so much for sharing your views as a Tesla investor. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today for a fun ride. And click subscribe to stay updated. For more videos on Tesla, you can also subscribe to the Bunti channel and the backholder spot. <laughs> and if you found this video useful, please click the like button. Enjoy the weekend, everyone. Bye-bye.